isn't going to be no Platt City. That's Jesse fooling with us. Bob considered the notion for a minute, and then slipped out of bed and into his clothes. Charlie looked at him and asked what he had in mind, but Bob merely said in a low voice, Go to sleep, and walked through the sitting room, dining room, kitchen, and stepped off the wooden porch into the night. He wore gray wool trousers over his long johns, but the chill convinced him to shawl his shoulders with a tattersall quilt that was being aired on the clothesline. He settled himself on a plain bench under the clothesline that sagged from the cottage eave. A mangled spoon was in the dirt. A straw doll was in a tin bucket. He heard the screen door creak and clap shut, heard his brother limp over and stand to the rear of him. He seemed to ponder their predicament, the past, the galaxy. He lowered onto the long bench like a man who weighed six hundred pounds, and Bob saw that it was Jesse. So you and me are the Nighthawks. Bob made no reply. Mrs. Saltzman cut out a garden plot here. The Turners say it was a marvel. Rabbit wire, noontime shade, clematis on the bean poles. I've been lazy about my seedlings. I don't like the garden. I just like to eat. Jesse clutched his trousers and craned his legs into alignment. He said, Maybe I'll nail together a martin box. He peered at his right knee and his left, and rapidly pounded them with his fists. I've got pains in every inch of my body. My ears ring. My eyes are itchy. I'm going to lose my gift of second sight. Do you see future things like they were long gone, or do you just get inklings about what's to come? Jesse showed no inclination to answer. He paused for some time and then asked, did you know Frank and I looked for my father's grave over in Marysville, California? You've mentioned that, but not at any length. I could picture the grave and the wooden cross, but I couldn't get the geography right. They said it was cholera that killed him. They might as well have said the bubonic plague. You can always tell when it's Satan's work. How? Trickery. Empty promises. Jesse scratched at his jaw beard. You missed the Palm Sunday service. I used to go every week, but that was because my daddy put a gun to my head. Jesse shut his eyes and recited, For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together, and we walked into the house of God in company. Jesse said, A good preacher will match that up with Matthew 26. He coughed meanly and spat to the right. He squeezed his mouth with his palm. Sometimes I get so forlorn and melancholy. Do you ever get that way? Bob shrugged. Do you know what it is you're most afraid of? Yes. What? I'm afraid of being forgotten, Bob said, and having admitted that, wondered if it was true. He said, I'm afraid I'll end up living a life like everyone else's, and me being Bob Ford won't matter one way or the other. It isn't always up to you, Bob. It may not be in the cards for you. Jesse looked over to Kansas and leaned on his knees for a minute. Do you ever get surprised when you see yourself in a mirror? Do you ever find yourself saying, Why do they call him by my name? It seemed to Bob that Jesse expected no response. You're wrapped in a ragged coat for your three score and ten, and nobody gets to see who's inside it. It's getting chilly, Bob said. Jesse's thoughts seemed to fly, and he concentrated on something that Bob couldn't see. His voice is like a waterfall. Whose voice? If I could stand in it for a second or two, all my sins would be washed away. I honestly can't follow this conversation. Jesse approximated a smile. 
Do you know who I'm jealous of? You. If I could change lives with you right now, I would. I guess this must be a case of the grass always being greener on the other side of the fence. You can go away right now if you want. You can say, Jesse, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the good Lord didn't put me here to rob the Platte City Bank. You can go inside and get your gatherings and begin a lifetime of grocery work. I'm roped in already. you still got the vote. That's a gift I'd give plenty for. He gripped the tattersall quilt at his neck. I don't know. I'm not acting according to any plan. I'm just getting myself out of spots and pressing for my best advantage. You can't always make things happen, Bob. Well, like I say, I'm just taking what comes my way. Jesse rose up and crimped his fingers over the metal clothesline, sagging a little on it, looking at the ground. You Fords show your teeth like apes. Bob couldn't imagine where their dialogue was going, but the man's gloom seemed vaguely dangerous. I'm going to call it a night. Jesse was slumped forward dismally, swinging his weight on the clothesline, making the metal hooks complain. He asked, Why don't you stay with me a little longer? I'm sort of sleepy, Jess. Go ahead, then, he said. Bob was perplexed by the man's despondency. He walked to the screen door and then said, I appreciate your frankness with me. This has been illuminating. I'm going to ponder all you said. Jesse moved off into the darkness. Don't make anything out of it, he said. I was only passing the time. <laughs>